I'm privileged to be standing here right next to one of the greats of implant dentistry, Dr. Michael, because he's, he's had a tremendous influence on my own practice. And he runs so many amazing courses that give clinicians the skills and the ability to understand and treat and plan the cases. How are you running your courses? That How come they're so successful? Thank you, uh, Dr. Fibushenko. I, I can tell you that um, I have uh, equally great um, a respect for what you have accomplished as well with your clinic and your teaching program, your institute in Australia. For me, it's been now 33 years. The Picos Institute began really with a very humble way with eight friends around a table. And I showed for two days, case after case after case of bone grafting techniques at that time. It evolved into a more or less a continuum of courses that again, it's now 33 years and just over 5,400 attendees from all 50 states and 43 countries. I think particularly the structure of your programs, the way, uh, the way that you structure them for different levels with different skill sets, uh, instead of just trying to teach everyone all the skills in one go, uh, people can choose what kind of uh, uh, course would suit them best for their skill level at the time. We're all, I believe, um, in a, a kind of a hybridization of so many individuals that have impacted our careers. We learn from each other here at this symposium that he's done an outstanding job with his team again. It's an ongoing process, it never ends. For my teachings, like uh, my area of, uh, of education, I guess, is more in, the, in sharing the clinical skill set. This is the focus and the niche of my training institutes. We do many live surgeries, we do the zygoma implants, bone grafting, a lot of the bone grafting. I was very, very much, especially in my early career influenced by uh, Michael's work. I find that uh, this really helped me develop some other techniques that are used every day now in my practice and that people flog to my courses to actually be part of it. So I have to thank you for being part of my uh, uh, sphere. Thank you so much. It's, uh, it's been really um, a wonderful uh, journey. And I say that because it is a journey and been very grateful to have so many in clinicians from literally everywhere still coming to our courses. I think it's primarily because of our being so honest and open with what we do. We share everything, so there's nothing hidden. And I think that's very important that the message is there. It's all about integrity. And no question our attendees understand that and they respect us for that. And I think that's the biggest thing that we can continue to, to make sure that we stick to. Yeah. Um, and that's pretty much it in a nutshell. I learned about the PIC system quite by accident, actually. I've always taken analog impressions, and uh, this was the, the only way that I could actually control the impression, uh, that, because I knew I was doing it all, I was connecting all the bits and pieces together. And of course, with the years, there's been this uh, evolution in the digital technology, and these digital systems came on the market where you could simply scan the implant bodies, the scan bodies, and then that would give you an impression of the implants but I never had confidence in that system because what that system does is it essentially stitches the images together. When you have an iPhone and you're trying to do a panorama, you hold the iPhone and you try and do this panorama and the longer the panorama is, the more distortion you get. And this was my concern and this was a real concern that I still have today. And I didn't know much about photogrammetry, I didn't know much about replication of parts in the aeronautical industry, and in automotive industry. One of my colleagues, uh, uh, called me and he said, I saw this system that doesn't use a stitching technique, that uses a measuring technique, one picture that measures the distances between the different dots and they use that for reproduction of parts in the aeronautical industry and car manufacturing. And I thought, you know, that sounds interesting. Let me have a look at that. And when I looked at that, it instantly made sense. I didn't need to see studies about it. I didn't need to see anything. It, it made sense because you're not stitching images together and you're still using a digital technology. And that's, that's how I came across the, the big system. And for me, it was by accident, if you will, as well. Been surfing online and noticed uh, one of my colleagues involved with this new technology. And I know we're the same. Yeah. You know, there's something new, we want to know about it. Yeah. Long story short, I grew with the rather technology, learned a little bit more about it from a pure restorative perspective. Until that time, which is now just over four years ago, we were analog based on the restorative uh, workflow and very cumbersome, very labor intensive, uh, not a lot of fun, et cetera, et cetera. So as we learn more about this technology, it became crystal clear again. It just made sense. You mentioned that 
makes all the sense. And when the training was immensely helpful. In fact, without the training, quite honestly, not sure that um, certainly myself and or my prosthodontist uh, colleague could have really embraced the technology and utilized it as we were taught during that three-day course in office. So with that training, we were able to very immediately incorporate the entire workflow such that we eliminated all of the, essentially 90% of the analog version of what we were doing to that point. So to this day, the only, really the only analog element are two Elgin impressions intraoperatively in order to capture the soft tissue base very accurately. And then we scan those impressions, of course, and that's obviously uh, an STL file itself and upload it to our digital lab, et cetera. So, so long and short of it is, it literally revolutionized how we have been doing things since then, and we have not looked back for sure. It's just been an amazing paradigm shift for us that has been nothing but fantastic from a time standpoint, from a cost standpoint, and from a convenience standpoint. And for the accuracy. And accuracy, most importantly, my gosh, yeah. So that accuracy to me, 10 microns, I think he has said more recently, six, pick a number. I mean, that is amazing. It truly is. Yeah. And give him all the credit for incorporating that technology into the dental arena. I use the peak every day and really, truthfully, uh, this has really changed how we do things in the practice. It, it, it's really streamlined our workflow in the digital space and we're able to now plan our cases and really progress from, from the pre-op to the surgery to the final restoration within a 24-hour period. And not only can we do that, but it's done very effectively and quite simply as well and not as labor intensive as you mentioned as, as the analog system. It, it saves time, it saves a lot of time, it's really quite user friendly so my staff can do an impression with the PIC system which is great, it gives me an extra few minutes to take a little bit of a break. It, it's really changed how we practice and uh, made my life a little bit easier because I didn't really didn't look forward to those analog impressions after a long time. I know and the wax yeah. rims and all that impression material, you name it, just ditto, ditto.